Good morning and thank you for joining us for St. James Worship this week. God is good. All the time. All the time? God is good. Again, good morning and thank you for being here. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have gathered us after a busy and eventful week and when we gather, you promise us rest. You promise to nourish us with your word. And so we pray, Lord, that as we gather this morning, though we are separated by distance, that you would unite us in our worship of you, that you would help us to lift our voices in song and prayer, and that you would open our ears to hear your message for our lives, a message of forgiveness in Jesus Christ, a forgiveness that we are called to share with one another. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A reading from Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood, Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever lay past and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord. My soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. When rich in love and you're slow to end. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. day when my strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord of oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing 
like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy The good news for this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the, remem if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Steve just told me from behind the computer that as I started to speak to you that my microphone wasn't on. So you could probably see my lips moving, but you couldn't hear what I was saying. So let's start over for a second. Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. This morning, our lesson from the Bible, Jesus talks about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a tricky thing. Forgiveness has to do when two people can't agree on something or one person does something that hurts another person, you say or do something that makes someone upset. Forgiveness is what happens when we find a way to talk to one another about those things and move on and still be friends. But what's really important for forgiveness is that we're able to hear one another and listen to one another. When I started this children's time without my microphone on, you probably couldn't hear me. You could only see my lips moving. And maybe you could guess what I was saying, but you couldn't actually hear the words. Forgiveness begins with hearing one another. When we are angry with someone, when we have a disagreement with someone, when someone says or does something that hurts us or hurts our feelings, the important thing is that they listen to us when we explain to them how it made us feel. If we're the one who does the thing that upsets someone, it's important for us to listen to them as well. In our lesson for today, Jesus talks about how forgiveness begins with listening. When we listen to one another, we can hear where we're coming from and forgiveness is possible. So it's really important to listen to each other. If you ever have a disagreement with someone, whether it's a mom or a dad or a friend or a brother or sister, anyone at all, it's important to listen to them. And it's important for them to listen to you. Because when we listen to each other and understand one another's feelings, then it becomes possible to forgive. God forgives all of us. If we ever do something that might upset God, God is there for us, ready to listen and ready to forgive us. God does this through Jesus. Forgiveness is so important to God, not just forgiving us, but that we forgive one another. So this week, that's what I want you to remember. If you have a disagreement with someone, if there's a problem, if something happens, it's important for you to listen to each other and that by listening, sometimes forgiveness is possible. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for forgiving us. Help us to listen to you, to listen to each other, and to forgive as you have forgiven us. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for 
being the God of all things, for being the God of creation, for being the God who sustains and nourishes all of us and everything in your creation. And we thank you also, Lord, for being a personal God, a God who is right beside us, listening to us, accompanying us, encouraging us. And so we pray, Lord, that you would help us to see each day the ways in which, you, in which your creation is knit together, that you are the God of all things and that you unite everyone together in your creation and in your amazing love. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So in his book, Searching for God Knows What, author Donald Miller tells about an exercise his teacher did with one of his grade school classes. He says, Mrs. Wunsch asked our class a question that I've come back to about a million times trying to figure out an answer. The question she asked went along with a lesson about values clarification. This is how the question went. If there were a lifeboat adrift at sea, and in the lifeboat were a male lawyer, a female doctor, a disabled child, a stay-at-home mom, and a garbage man, and one person had to be thrown overboard to save the others, which person would we choose? He goes on to say, I don't remember which person we threw out of the boat. I think it came down to the lawyer, but I can't remember exactly. I do remember, however, that the class did not hesitate in deciding who had value and who didn't. My friends in Christ, in many ways, we are riding in a lifeboat every day. We are adrift out in the world, and you and I both know that the seas can change rapidly. One minute, the waters may be as still as glass, and our tiny boat just glides easily and effortlessly along, and peace fills us through and through. The next minute, the swells may get so big that water is crashing down on us from every direction as we frantically try to secure everything and at the same time bail out all of that water just to stay afloat. In some ways, we live in a lifeboat every day. And when you live in a lifeboat every day, for as long as we have, it's bound to affect your outlook, your attitude, your point of view. Donald Miller believes that we live in the lifeboat, and he believes also that we subscribe to values clarification every day, that we live by what he calls lifeboat politics. I'll be honest with you. I began looking at today's gospel lesson before I made the connection to the lifeboat, before I read Donald Miller's book, before the light bulb went off in my head. But now, after reading it, I know that we live in a lifeboat, and I know that many times we live by lifeboat politics, because that's the point of view that I brought to this lesson without even realizing it. When I looked at this lesson, I immediately started thinking about who gets thrown out. What jumped out at me is, if you're not listened to, if the member refuses to listen, and let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. And lastly, and maybe best for the lifeboat, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind in the lifeboat, whatever you loose in the lifeboat. So if you don't listen, if you aren't worthy, then guess what? You might be the one going overboard, and you can find your own way out there, swimming along with the rest of the Gentiles and the tax collectors. Good luck with that. The problem with lifeboat politics the problem with a values clarification outlook on life and relationships is that it's missing one very import, important element, something that was in the text all along, but that I passed by and you may have too. Maybe it's because we've been in the lifeboat for too long. Jesus says in our lesson for today, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. While we might be busy trying to figure out who we want to throw out of the boat and into the open water, Jesus might be sitting in the boat with us, shaking his head. This lesson about life in the church is not a values clarification lesson. It's not about how to decide who we push out of the boat. It's not about whose opinion matters most. Instead, I think it's about a new perspective that looks at how to keep the boat afloat, not by cutting away, but instead by gathering in. In Jesus' lifeboat, we're called to reach out into the water, to pick up some of the people who are struggling to stay afloat all by themselves and pull them in and dry them off. And then once we've done that, try to find a way to make room for more. And all the while, as Jesus walks with us, the lifeboat politics get left behind because every decision, every movement, 
Every wave or storm that looms on the horizon and threatens our tiny boat is met first by Jesus. He isn't off walking on the water. He isn't up in the sky looking down on us. Instead, he's sitting right here with us, tying down the food and the clean water, holding the boat steady, reaching out to pull us in when we're the one who falls out, and then holding us safely inside. Life in Christ, life in community together as the body of Christ is all about the lifeboat. It's all about the life that God constantly provides and guards for us. The beauty of it is that life in community as the body of Christ is never, by the grace of God, about lifeboat politics. Somehow, even though we're adrift on a vast sea in a tiny inflatable raft, there is room for everyone. All are welcome, all are safe, because all of us are riding along with Jesus. Values clarification, if you look around, is rampant in our world today, and it wants to make it easy for us to decide who gets to stay and who gets thrown out. The problem is that when you look at life that way, you can make a case for just about anyone to go overboard. And worse yet, life becomes more about deciding who gets tossed rather than how to save the whole group. God looks at the lifeboat that we live in, and God says, I love everyone. And for that reason, God builds a kingdom through that love, a love that will constantly go overboard for our sake, a love that faces life outside of the boat, a love that faces the reality of death so that there will be a place for all in that boat. And somehow, beyond that grim reality, beyond the crashing waves that swallowed Christ up, somehow there is a glassy sea peaceful waters where our tiny boat drifts safely, with Christ there living among us. Donald Miller concludes his discussion of the church and the lifeboat, saying that in church, the rules of the lifeboat don't apply, that church is a refuge where the kingdom of God is emulated, not mocked. We are in the lifeboat, but we're called to emulate the vast kingdom of God with all its richness, the kingdom that was built on a Christ who affirms that all are valued all are welcomed, and no one ever gets tossed out. We've been told that we are living in a lifeboat and that some are worthy of the safety and the life that can be found there, but others must go. I don't think God would agree with this. Thankfully, we aren't ever alone in this tiny little boat. Jesus is always here to make sure, somehow, that there is room for all and that no one will ever be tossed out. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to our song of the day, it's a short and simple song and a prayer for unity. As Pastor reminds us, the purpose of today's reading is not judgment, but unity. Unity in Christ's presence and reconciliation when troubles and conflicts do arise. And so we pray boldly that God would make us one. And so people would know the truth of Jesus and the love that he brings. Father, make us one. That the world may know you have sent the Son. Father, make us one. Father, make us one. Father, make us one. That the world may know you have sent the Son. Father, make us one. 
Our worship continues as we pray together. You're invited to respond to each prayer. I'll close the petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and you can respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative works of, work of churches in this community. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council, Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we call to mind this day and all those on our St. James prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There are just a couple of congregational announcements to include this morning. I want to thank Rob and Steve for their help in our live stream each week. Our mission of the month, it is the first Sunday in September, and so our mission of the month will go toward St. James' participation in Loaves and Fishes of Rhode Island. As I mentioned last week, Loaves and Fishes is getting back up and running, and in this sort of new normal world that we're in, they're doing things a little bit differently, and so we're raising funds so that we might provide uh, meals to package up, personal care items, drinks, all kinds of things. What we're doing now is gathering up those things and taking them to agencies locally that work with people in need, places like Crossroads, Rhode Island, or the Mathewson Street Methodist Church, both in Providence. And so if you're able to contribute your contribution to our mission of the month, this month will go to offset our costs here at St. James for pro providing runs uh, for Loaves and Fishes of Rhode Island. And I want to thank George and John and everyone else who's taking part in that, making sure stuff is gathered and distributed. Donations can be made online. I want to thank everyone who contributed this week, whether you made an online donation, whether you sent your check along, whether it was through a direct deposit, things like that. We are certainly appreciative of all the support. If you'd like to make a donation online, you can visit our website, stjames-ri.org, and you can click on the Donate button. There's a PayPal button there, which will allow you to make a donation to St. James. And again, thank you to everyone who has made donations this week. Our building will remain closed. You're invited to reach out to me via phone, text, email, Facebook Messenger, all of those ways. If you need my contact information, it is in our weekly St. James emailing. Thank you again for joining us this week. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for this worship time, time to rest, time to connect with you and one another. And we pray, Lord, that as we leave worship as we sing our closing song and return to our daily lives, that you would remind us, wherever we are gathered, you are present. When we face difficulty or struggle, when we experience disagreements among ourselves, when we fall into the trap of thinking that 
some are welcome and others should be pushed out, we pray, Lord, that you would remind us of your forgiveness, your forgiveness for all people through Jesus and our call to share that forgiveness with the world around us. As we go, Lord, we know you will bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled and striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I'll stand. In Christ alone who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Kill on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God has satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I'll sleep And there in the ground his body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then burst it forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory with sin had lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine run with the precious blood of God no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of God in me, for Christ was kind to find no breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of man, scheme of man, would ever pluck me from his hands. He returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Once again, thank you for joining us for worship this week. You can find us here each Sunday at 9 a.m., either through Zoom or Facebook Live. I hope that you have a great week. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. No power of hell, no scheme of man could never pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand.